Guess what, guys? It's my anniversary! No, not with my husband or even a human. It's actually with an inanimate object. Um, it's with this lady here. <laughs> Stay tuned for the one year review. Hey everyone, welcome to Sue May Every Day. I am Sue May. Thank you so much for watching. So, today is my one year anniversary with this beauty right here. My beautiful, beautiful Louis Vuitton Bichette Matisse in the Empreinte leather in the black. It's been a full year since I purchased her and brought her home. I mean, it kind of snuck up on us a little bit, didn't it? Okay, she's not gonna answer, but um, thought I would finally give a thorough review. So for those who are new here, welcome. My name is Sue May, and I typically do videos on luxury handbags, lifestyle things, a little bit of everything, everyday things. And if you like stuff like that, me, you know, treating my handbags like dear family members or loved ones, this is the right place to be. And think about subscribing. And I even got like dressed up for this occasion too, if you could tell. All right, maybe it's not really super dressed up. I technically still have jeans on, if you can see. <laughs> but I uh, got my Zara blazer on. Love this with the gold buttons. It's like the tweed type of material. And then this top was inspired by Chase Amy. Thank you so much for that influence. It's from Abercrombie & Fitch. And it's a lovely camisole. So for today's video, I am going to kind of go more in depth about this. So I spent a whole year with this beauty. And I would have to say, it's been a nice year. No major damages. I mean, I don't use this bag that often. If you can see here, I still have the plastic on the uh, S-lock. It's up here and down here as well. So it's gonna stay on there. It's like, you know, it's, it's not ready to fall off. Kind of like a newborn baby's belly button. Just not ready. Leave it alone until it's ready to fall off on its own. This little bag charm does not come with the bag. This I just added on its own. I'll remove it if it's becoming too distracting thing. Just picked this up from Poshmark, I believe. It's really cute. Uh, it has the gold detail as well, and it has like slight studding, and you know I'm big on my studding. So what more can I possibly say about this bag that hasn't already been said in the thousands and thousands of videos that are probably available on YouTube alone right now? Uh, there's probably definitely old videos and current videos of this bag. It's such a popular bag. This is going to be my real honest opinions, my experiences with this bag. So the topics I'm going to go over are the description dimensions the like the details of the bag inside and out you could definitely find this information on louisvuitton.com but just thought i'd throw it in there as well just in case you just don't feel like clicking over there and being tempted and then i'm also gonna i guess share like quick tips on how to care for the bag like what's actually stated on the louis vuitton website and then how i care for the bag and then i'm gonna go through the pros and cons of this bag well i guess they're gonna be my pros and cons there might be a mix of things in there that you've probably already heard or the maybe it's something new as well. I'm not 100% sure, but they're going to be my pros and cons. And then I'm going to do some mod shots with this. I'm also going to do a what fits inside this bag. And then lastly, it's going to be about whether or not I would recommend the bag, whether or not if I had to do it all over again, would I pick up this bag? So I'm going to have my notes here. So currently this is retail for 2,230 US dollars on the Louis Vuitton website. And the actual dimensions is 9.84 inches across 7.48 inches tall and then it's about 2.76 in depth this is in completely all cowhide leather this has the embossing on there so if you can see where after time and like after wearing and tearing this actually should start flattening out where you don't see the little imprints anymore i'm not quite there i don't use this bag that often after a year obviously you could see it's still all there and it's still in pretty great condition it's all gold hardware so it has the logo on top and then it has like louis vuitton paris on the bottom and this is a s lock so you would open it that way you squeeze these two buttons together and then it pops open there's gold hardware on the sides where the straps would click on and then on the sides as well you can see it's also louis vuitton on this little button in the back is a gold zipper here zipper pull also has louis vuitton on there and then there's also I believe Louis Vuitton on here as well and then the other side for the strap I normally when I'm not wearing it I place the strap inside the strap also has has all gold hardware as well with the Louis Vuitton 
and the strap is also adjustable and there is one two three four five six seven hole adjustments for the strap drop the minimum is 18.9 inches and then the max it could go up to 21.7 inches and this bag also has a top handle you will see that it also has louis vuitton kind of embossed on top i honestly didn't think this was important or i really didn't think much about this but i'm telling you now i feel like all bags like this should have a top handle this comes so much in handy so much in handy does that make sense this comes in handy the inside has like a gray canvas color here's the dust bag that comes with it and it's three compartments so it's one the largest one is in the middle and then three in the back then it kind of like opens up like an accordion so that way it could kind of like stretch out as you pile in a bunch of things so now I'm gonna go over some carrying tips for this bag. I'm gonna read off some that are recommended by the Louis Vuitton website. Since they are the makers of this bag, I think they should have the best like care instructions and I'll let you know like what my opinions are of those as well. So one of the things they said was, you know, obviously to keep it away from any like dampness or humidity. Since this is genuine leather, that could warp the bag. So just be careful with that, especially when you're, if you're storing it or how you, I guess, display the the bag so make sure like that area that you do keep it in is not too damp or humid and also avoiding direct sunlight this probably applies indoors and outdoors you definitely do not want this like to be baking in the sun that can't be good for anything definitely try to keep it like away from direct sunlight you can see here my window is right there and then you see like all of my bags are here during the day that curtain is pulled i tried not to let in any light to touch any of the bags here and so far so good also kind of in the same lines like to keep it away from like direct heat so if like your storage your shelf or your closet is like near like a direct heating source like a vent like maybe to move this away and to wash it it says to never ever Ever use soap for this or any like harsh abrasive like cleaning like solutions like I mentioned before I don't really use this regularly but then as soon as I come home I remove everything from the bag and then I actually wipe it down depending on where I have been I'll remove the strap I'll roll it up and put it inside the bag and I leave the dust bag inside as well to try to keep its shape and then I'll wipe it down if necessary with this but I believe like this has been like recommended from a few youtubers basically like water wipes there's like nothing else in there is 99.9% .9 water and it's like a drop of fruit extract so I use this for all of my handbags and I have used it for this as well and while doing this video this was a slip up of mine I noticed there is a stain on my strap. I must have been eating mustard because that's what it looks like. I think I know exactly where this came from. I think this was from New York when we were eating hot dogs and my husband had to have mustard and it must have dripped a little bit on there. So totally not planned. I can't believe I missed that. I'm gonna wipe it down right now with a water wipe. And this actually fell right onto the glazing as well. So I'm just gonna do a quick wipe here. And there's still a little dot there, as you can see. And it's gone. Do like a quick like wipe down just to remove any extra dirt that I don't see, especially because of the fact that it's black. I can't, I still can't believe I missed that mustard stain. So that's what I would normally do. And especially like I use this top handle a lot. So I'll just kind of do like a quick wipe down. So yeah, you got to see the water wipe in action. So that's how I normally care for the bag. And then if you see, as I mentioned before, this is where I normally store it. I don't put it in the dust bag. I do have the dust bag here, but I've heard things from other YouTube videos that they don't really recommend putting in here. Like it is actually better if it's breathing, I guess. And I mean, I love it where, hey, I wanna display it and show its gorgeousness. Every so often I'll go like obviously over all the shelving and like a light swipe of like a duster. But other than that, like I don't do anything else to this bag. I don't necessarily baby 
my bags, but then I'm not super harsh. I'm not throwing this around or like running a marathon with it. I think that's why it's held up in such great shape. Like I don't even see any scratches on the zipper, which is amazing. So got a little sidetracked there, but those are kind of like the care and the beware type of like instructions to maintain the beauty of this bag. Okay, so moving on to the pros and cons. I will start with the pros. So pro number one, it's gorgeous. It's such a popular bag for a really legitimate reason. It's a gorgeous bag. It's a gorgeous shape. You know, number one, I think that's like the best reason sometimes. It's gorgeous. It's They made such a nice looking bag. Pro number two, it also holds a good amount of like essentials. Like it has three fairly large pockets here. Now, depending on how much you like to carry with you, like I think this is sufficient for a majority of people. There are going to be the, the few that carry much more than this, and that's when you have to go to like the tote bags. But if you don't carry that much, this actually holds a really, really good amount. And I like how it's different compartments. It's not just one big hole that you just dump all your stuff in. So that way everything is kept more organized. And if that wasn't enough, you know, storage, don't forget about this back pocket here. The next pro is all about the strap that it comes with. So it comes with a cowhide strap as well and this is removable and is adjustable. Why is it being removable like a pro? So that way you don't have to carry it with the strap. You could just carry it as a top handle bag and also you could switch up the straps. You could do like a chain strap or like those like guitar straps. Sky's the limit. This is a black bag so anything would pretty much go. Another pro would be this top handle mentioned before I think didn't really think too much about it but now after owning this bag and using it this strap comes so handy when you want to get into your bag you obviously are gonna grab it so i think if this didn't have the top handle i would end up grabbing it like this all the time and if you can see what will happen when i start grabbing it a lot it will start losing its structure it's just easier to grab and then i could actually go into the bag easier i could flip it around so this top handle i love it to pieces and another pro would be its ability to possibly keep its value. It's one of those odd things that this will possibly retain its value and I could either recoup most or all of the money that I paid for it as long as I keep it in like fairly good condition, which I think I am aiming for, and I could move on. I could either take that money back and reinvest it in something else or purchase a new bag. I mean, that's a definite pro. There's not many things that we can say that that does that even a car loses its value that's pretty awesome in my book and the last pro is the versatility because of the shape and the size this definitely could be a casual bag if you guys know me I'm a very casual person so I gravitate it towards this I mean the fact that it's black it's you know a little larger and just like the way it functions this is a more casual bag but that being said because it's black with like the gold hardware and I could remove the straps, totally acceptable as like a dressier evening bag as well if you needed to carry a lot. And now onto the cons. So it's expensive. This is over $2,000. It's a lot of money. This is not made for everyone. I mean, I work full time, my husband works full time, and even I had to kind of save up for this. It, depending on where I'm going, what I'm doing, and the fact that I want to maintain its newness and its like quality, so I don't tend to use this that much because of the price. And then if that wasn't bad enough, it's a hard bag to get. Maybe not the Empreant, but definitely in the canvas. It, it's been a while since I've stalked the LV site, been trying to be really good this year, but I think if I recall and, and hearing the buzz, it's still a difficult bag to get. So even if you finally saved up all your hard-earned money to get this bag, you might have a difficult time to get it. I had to wait for this, just this bag when I purchased it last year. They did not have a black Empreant in the boutique, so I actually had to wait for them to order one to bring into the store so because of the difficulty like I could see this turning a lot of people off like it gets frustrating for them like why do are they ready with their money and then they can't get the bag they can't access it and the next thing would be it's an all leather bag and I feel like I don't have a scale with me but it's a little on the weighty side it's not extremely heavy but I want to say this is probably definitely heavier than like the say the canvas bag you know what my 
sister-in-law has the pochette Matisse in the monogram canvas. Maybe I could borrow her bag and I'll do a comparison video and I'll weigh it and do like a comparison between like the amp the Empreon and the canvas. Let me know in the comments if that's something you would be interested in. But anyway, like I do feel like, I mean, this is completely empty and it already kind of has a weight to it. Especially if I have to carry the amount that could fit in here, it becomes extremely heavy. And then the last con, and I think this is a normal con for everyone, is the lock. I'm so used to bags when I'm using bags that I could get in and out really quickly. I could close it up and be done. And I know a lot of complaints stem from not being able to close it while the bag is empty. That is very true. I cannot close this while it's empty. I have to kind of like really, really push it in and then it locks. The time that stands out to me is when I wore it to New York. So, you know, it's busy, busy. There's tons of people there. There was stuff inside of the bag and I would have it crossbody. So it was more on my hip towards like my back. And I would just kind of grab something real quick without looking. And then I would just kind of like with one hand without looking, like close it. And I think I hear the click. Meanwhile, and then I'm walking blocks and blocks in New York. We stopped somewhere. And then I realized, oh my gosh, it was open the entire time, like flapping around while I'm like, walking in the streets of New York. Someone totally could have just went in and without me even noticing. I could have sworn I heard the click. So now I'm like a little bit more careful where I'll take the time to swing it around to make sure it clicks. And then I'll actually like pull on it too to make sure like it's closed. So the lock, it's a little bit of a con. I mean, it's, it's very nice, but for like quick use for like every day, it's difficult. So yeah, that's the last con, which is the most, I think, common con of this bag. And now on to mod shots. So for the first look, I removed the strap. So I'm using it as a top handle. So you can use that as a, like a clutch for like an evening out. Uh, I think it looks like a little briefcase. So I think it's adorable. So this is a really cute look. For the next look, I added the strap back on. So I'm about 5'3", and this is the length that I like to wear it at as a crossbody. I have it on like the third notch from the end. So it's a little longer. And here I'm showing the top handle in action. You see how easy it was to get into the bag and look at that S lock trying to give me some trouble because the bag is empty, but it's all good. Here it is in the same length, but as a shoulder bag. So it is a little long, but I typically don't like to wear it as a shoulder bag anyway. Um, I probably would shorten it if I wanted to do a shoulder bag. And now here it is in the shortest setting. This is the minimum drop of 18.9 inches and I have it in the crossbody. It's kind of higher up than I would like. Uh, so it's like near my torso. So I don't prefer it to be that high, but um, just want to show you like how short it could get. And still on the shortest setting as a shoulder bag. This is exactly how I would prefer to wear it if I were to wear it as a shoulder bag. So this works really well for me at the 5'3 height. And now this is in the longest setting. This is the max drop of 21.7 inches. I feel like this is extremely long, especially as a shoulder bag. So I probably definitely wouldn't wear it this way. All right, so I thought I would get lower down so you guys could see what fits in the bag. So I have a ton of things here. Um, I have my mini pochette. I have my, um, I forget what this is called. It's an Ampriant, um, I want to say key holder, key pouch. I'll insert like the words or whatever, what this is called below. I have a compact wallet here, my six key holder, round coin purse, and my trusty, trusty pocket agenda that I have been loving, guys. And then also my phone that is also in a within a magnet wallet here. I mean, I could essentially take it out of here, but I do normally carry my phone this way. So yeah, let's see what fits in here. So I would typically, well, you know what? No, let's start with, let's see if I could fit all of this in there. So I'm going to put my compact wallet in the biggest slot, my pocket agenda, my mini pochette in the front pocket, my round coin purse. Let's stick that also in the front with the mini pochette. I'm going to put the mini pochette like vertically just so it could fit. I might move it around. My six key holder in the back. This thing here, <laughs> I cannot remember the name. I'll put it in the front pocket with the mini pochette. My Rebecca Minkoff sunglass holder with the sunglasses inside. It could fit in the middle because this has like some space on top. And let's see if it could close. Ooh, barely guys, barely. But 
all of that fits inside. Oh, and lest I forget my phone, so then I would stick it in the back. But it can't really go all the way in. Oh, it could. I normally don't put it all the way in. I, I'll actually have it like this, where it's like sticking out. I know. Just for the purpose of this video, I could put this in. Oh my god, I've never packed her to this much before. I need two hands to hold this. It's so heavy because there's a lot of stuff in here. So let me take everything back out. Oh, my phone. The S-lock had gave me a little trouble because it's so tightly packed. <sighs> okay. So what I typically would put in here, I kind of don't really bring this out if I'm carrying this bag. Like I mentioned before, my phone actually has like slots for cards too and for cash in here. And then I'll put like more cards in here as well. I typically wouldn't bring this with me depending on where I'm going, but I wouldn't bring this with me. This is more like it goes to work with me. This I would normally wear on the weekend, so I typically would not use this. I think this is what I would typically carry. So I definitely, my go-to is my mini push I'm gonna put that in the middle slot usually. And since all my cards, oops, all my cards would be in here, I'm gonna put this in the front. My six key ring, I'm gonna put in the back. And I will bring my coin purse since I don't carry the big wallet anymore. I will bring my sunglasses depending if it's sunny or not. I'll put that in the middle or sometimes in the front. And my phone could actually fit in here. And that's actually what I normally would carry. My phone will start off in here, but then it'll end up back here. So this is easier to close. Still a little heavy, but not as heavy as, I guess, removing these two pieces here. That's what fits inside. You can see the more you guys stuff, the more it gets stretched out. So it's okay that it's like that. There you go. What fits inside my bag. So for the last and final topic, do I have any regrets? Would I buy this again? I would have to say the only regret that I have, and it, it's, I guess it's nothing that I could, I have power over. I mean, the only power I have over it is just to not buy it. The regret would be the price of the bag. When I think about how much this bag costs, like take the time to think, wow, I'm carrying around like a over $2,000 bag. Now for you Chanel lovers and Hermes lovers, like that's like pocket change now. But for me, that's a ton of money. And when I allow myself to think about it, sometimes I just kind of like ignore it or try to push it in the back of my mind because it's done, like I already have it. But when I allow myself to really think about it, that is one of the regrets that I have. Think of like what I could have done with that money. I could have had like a bunch of little bags or that could have went towards like a nice family vacation. It just seems so wasteful on this bag. But my peace of mind is I, th I would like to think once I'm ready to move on from this bag, if I'm ever ready to move on from this bag, I don't know if I am. I mean, it's only been a year, so it's kind of hard to say still. I can recoup most of my money, if not all. I guess essentially I can use it, enjoy it, and then I could end up selling it years from now and kind of recoup my cost. So that's kind of like the one and and only, I guess, regret of this bag. Other than that, I do love this bag. It's been a great year with it. I am so fortunate to be able to have this bag in my collection. When I look at it, it does make me happy, makes my heart sing. I don't have anything that's in this shape. Since this is kind of like a collection, like it checks off a box for me. So with that, no major regrets other than the price. And would I recommend it? Yes. I would recommend this. And if I had to do it all over again, would I purchase this again? And I would say yes, I would purchase this again. So yeah, me and Pomi are gonna be family for a while. Yes, I call her, I called her Pomi. Sometimes that's like a that's like a pet name that I have. No, I totally just made that up. I I don't know. I just took Pochette and Matisse together. Still in love with this bag after one long year. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any any questions, any comments, uh, any concerns, let me know. And you know, I will try to answer it as quickly as I can. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for your continued support. I really truly appreciate it. So yeah, me and Pomi are saying bye guys. See you on the next video. Pomi, Popo, Pomet, Titi, Pochetti. What do you guys think?